Okay, so just quick review, just because that's fun. As chemists, we want to be able to count atoms, but we can't count atoms, so it's a problem. But we do know the ratio of atoms to mass. Okay, so for example, I want to count atoms, but I don't want to count them individually, I want to count them in groups. The grouping that we use to count atoms is a mole. And it represents what number? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, and so the ratio of moles to individual atoms is that Avogadro's number. Okay, so this many atoms per one mole. Okay, so I can convert back and forth between them like that. Okay, using that ratio. The reason this is convenient is because we know the connection between moles of atoms and grams of atoms. Do you remember what that ratio is called? Molar mass. Molar mass. Okay, so that what that means is that I know how many grams a mole of any material is. Because the mass of one mole matches the mass on the periodic table. Okay, so yes, carbon on average is 12 AMU for one atom. But we figured out that if I have a mole of carbon atoms, I automatically know the mass of it because it just is that number in grams. Okay, and so we're converting between these things. Okay, and then I can be mean and go from there and do something like milligrams or whatever, but I'm just adding a step. But fundamentally, this is what we're talking about. Or if I'm really mean, I can give you like uh, milliliters and then you have to use like density to convert. Okay, but the point is, all of these things are connected. Yes? I got one thumbs up. Okay, and a sure. Okay, so I just want to kind of expand what we can do with this type of thing. Okay, so the first thing is we can look at what compounds are made of. And we can talk about moles of elements within a compound. So, so far we've done molecules, particles, formula units, all that stuff, but we can break those down into individual atoms if we wanted to, or individual elements within that, okay? Uh, we can determine the moles of each element in the sample. We, use this using, we do this using molar ratios. Okay, so the ratio of one element to one mole of the overall compound, okay? This is pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? So check this out. Let's say I have a mole of a compound. Okay, let's say I have a mole of water. And I'm going to ask a different question than I've asked before. Instead of, we know that this is 6.022 times 10 to 23 water molecules, but what if I wanted to know how many hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms are in the water? Thoughts on how we might do this? Yeah. Like how much of the molar mass is hydrogen and how much is oxygen? It's easier than that. Um, so there's not even mass. I'm not even asking the mass of it. I just want to know how many. I know I have a mole's worth of molecules, but how many hydrogen atoms do I have? One. One what? Amen. That's a mass. There's no mass. I'm counting things. How many? How many atoms are there? One hydrogen atom. Hmm? Water molecule, yes. I've got a zillion of these. And by a zillion, I mean a mole, a whole mole of them. Is there like two moles of hydrogen? Mm, okay, there we go. Now we're getting there, right? For every molecule, I'm going to click the wrong thing. For every molecule, I have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, yes? 
for every molecule, like two hydrogens and one oxygen. If I have a mole of molecules, then that means I have twice as many hydrogen atoms and the same number of oxygen atoms. Do we see that ratio, how that works? Maybe another example could be if I, let's say I have a boring sandwich, okay, my sandwich has uh, one burger patty and two breads. Okay, if I have one sandwich that's a patty and two breads, one of these means I have one of these and two of these. That's two pieces of bread and one patty to make the sandwich. If I had a mole of sandwiches, well, that just means I have one mole of meat, or whatever your patty's made of, and then two times as many breads, slices of bread to make the sandwich. Kind of make sense? What we're doing here? Yes, no, maybe? And it doesn't always go from left to right like that? What do you mean? Oh, that's never mind. Okay. I thought you were making a fraction. Oh, no. No, I'm just writing it on top. Okay, notice that the, nu the number of moles matches the subscript. Okay, one mole of oxygen and then the subscript, is, it's implied that it's one. Okay, so the subscripts are telling us the ratio of the elements within the compound. Okay, we kind of already know that. Okay, so for example, let's say I have 0.688 moles of calcium sulfate. Okay, and I want to know how many moles of each element I have in that sample. What's the first thing we should probably do? Figure out what calcium sulfate is. need to figure out the formula for calcium sulfate. This is ionic. What's the formula for calcium and its charge? Ca, Ca what charge? Uh, plus two. two plus, okay. Sulfate? So SO4. SO4. Minus two, yeah. So my compound's gonna look like that. Nice, okay. So I have 0.688 moles of this, and I wanna know, okay, well how many moles of each element do I have? So if we think of it on a smaller scale, for every individual calcium sulfate I have, I have one of these atoms, right? One of these atoms and four of these. So maybe I could think of it in dozens. If I had a dozen of these, I'd have one dozen of those atoms, one dozen of those, and four dozen oxygens, right? If I had a mole, I'd have a mole of these, a mole of these, and then four moles of those, because the subscripts are telling me that ratio. So if I had 0.688 moles of that, how do I figure out the moles of each element? Do you take, like, what it counts? No mass, no we're just counting. Uh, not divided. Multiply. We'd multiply. It would look like this. Okay, I would have here. Well, I'm just putting. That's just the answers. I would have 0.688 moles of the compound. Okay, and if I wanted to do a picket fence. Okay, for every mole of calcium sulfate, how many moles of calcium do I have? One, right? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I have 0.68 moles of calcium sulfate, I have 0.688 moles of calcium. See how that works? What about sulfur? Same thing. Same thing, right? I have one sulfur for each calcium sulfate, so I mean, I could just change that and get the same answer. Okay, but what about oxygen? Oxygen's a little different. How many moles of oxygen do I have per mole of calcium sulfate? Four. four. Yeah, you have four times as many. For every one of these, I got four times as many oxygens packed in there. So now I need to take 0.688 times four, yes? 2.75? Maybe? Cool. So what we're using here is we're using a new conversion factor. This is called a molar ratio. OK, 
a, it's called a molar ratio because it's a ratio and it has moles on top and bottom, okay? Notice how also the compound is now kind of part of the unit. We're converting from moles of this compound or this species to moles of this species within it, okay? So moles of calcium sulfate cancels with moles of calcium sulfate and I have moles of an individual element within that compound. If I just put four moles over one mole, that'd be kind of confusing. If I want to be really technical, I need to put the element in the compound that I'm talking about. Okay? And those all we're doing, does it go further? Say what? Does it get more complicated? Uh, we're going to do something else, but in terms of mole ratios, that's, that's it. Okay. Okay? So let's just try another one real quick, okay? I'll ask it a different way. Let's say I want to make a compound. Let's say I want to make magnesium chloride. How much magnesium, how much chlorine do I need to put that all together? We should probably figure out what you need to get to make magnesium chloride. What's the formula for magnesium chloride? Yeah? MgCl2. Sounds right to me. Another ionic compound. Okay, so it's the same idea. I want to make 5.1 moles of magnesium chloride. And I can do a picket fence where I look for moles of each element per mole of the compound. Okay, pretty simple math. How many magnesiums do I have per mag each magnesium chloride? One. So if I want to make 5.1 moles of this, I need 5.1 moles of that particular element. Mole, sorry. Okay, if I did chlorine, what's that ratio? Two. two to one. I need two chlorines for every magnesium chloride. And again, the subscript just tells you the ratio, two to one. 5.1 times two is? 10.2. 10.2. Okay, 5.1 moles of magnesium, 10.2 moles of chlorine. We okay with this? Do I have another one? I think I have another one. Here, I'll just do it really fast. Aluminum hydroxide, let's do that. What's that compound? Aluminum, what's hydroxide? OH minus one. So the chemical formula, ALOH3, yes? So I have this many moles to begin with, and it's gonna, I'm going to break it down into the elements, and I want to know how many moles of each element I end up with. What's my mole ratio for... Here, let's just set up the ratios. Moles of aluminum per moles of the compound. What's that mole ratio? Hmm? No, the ratio. How many aluminums do I have per aluminum hydroxide? One. Yeah, one. So that's a one to one ratio. And then I would just multiply that by that. How many moles of oxygen do I get? for every mole of aluminum hydroxide? Well, but the subscript is one. You have a three out here, yes. Good, you have three of those, so you have to multiply. So three of that, what about hydrogen? Did I hear three question mark? Yes, if I have three hydroxides, I have three hydrogens, okay? And so I'm doing half the picket fence. You would take this times that, which is just the same number. Then you would take this times that, you get three times this. And then this times that, you get the same number. Okay, and uh, the answers look like that. Questions? Sure. Um, do we only have to check the charges if 
if it's a polyatomic ion or something, and you'd be doing for everything. Um, if you need to know the chemical formula, then you should be thinking about the charges. Okay. Yeah. Are we tired today, or are we just like brain dead, and this is just like going in one ear and out the other? So, so, so I'm just beyond Okay. If we start in grams, then do we have to convert it to moles? You would go to moles and then do that, which we're not doing yet. Are we going to do that? When are we doing that? I mean, there's probably one on the worksheet. Oh, yeah, you did it yesterday, so, yeah, you know. What we're basically doing is looking at ratios of the parts that make up the compound. And the ratios are given to us by the subscripts. How about we take a, I don't know, 15, 20 minute break. I will let you start the worksheet and try to work on these problems. And then we can come back and I could try to do the rest because I was going to do another thing. But I feel like that's just going to like not sink in. Okay. So let me hand out what we're working on from this and we'll go from there. Okay. We're just taking it in chunks. Yeah, so I'm here. Oh, yeah. 